Marenberg. Certainly was a lot of rich folk there. Kruger was right about that. The caravan job paid well. And to be fair, the caravans out that way don't really get into as much trouble as they do in other parts of the Empire, but... I don't know. None of it really felt like it had any meaning. New faces a lot of the time. Silent business types. Not the sort of folk you really get a connection with, you know? I thought about going on a ship a few times. Sailing away, seeing the world. More than just the Empire out there, you know? Or so I've heard. But again, it didn't really feel like any of that would have any meaning either. I just wanted my family back. They've all gone. Mostly. Mom, my sister. And then even from her, nothing. She said she'd write. I can't read, of course, but I was going to get someone else who could do that for me, you know? And then I started thinking, has she just forgotten me too? No. No, I knew it had to be something worse. Well, we're nearly there now, aren't we? I guess I'm going to find out exactly what's happened to her sooner rather than later. Suppose at least Kruger's here. But is he going to be able to help? I hope so. I really hope so. This is Red Moon role playing. The Berabel slowly moves along the River Reich, as always, as you begin making your way from Kemperbad down the long, long, long stretch of river that will eventually lead to the great city of Nuln. Although that is quite a way off still. Your destination apparently is only three days of travel. This is the first day. Here, the woods become far less hospitable. Not that they ever have been, but the trees along the riverbank grow taller, the woods grow darker. There are no villages, no ports, no dams, just open water. The length of the River Reich here extends quite a lot. You recall when you were on the Weisbrook Canal, one boat could barely get across at a time. Now the width of the Reich is such that if you were to cross from one end to the other in a boat, it could take you maybe half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. It is much wider here. The air is fresh though, and even though there is no sign of civilization anywhere, it is a rather peaceful stretch of the Reich, as your boat hits deep water. You will find yourself on the boat, just finishing your lunch. Is there anything particular the three of you are talking about? You have much to think on. Your visit to Kemperbad turned out to be very interesting indeed. You found out some interesting clues, but some of those clues led to places which didn't seem to be very helpful. You did, however, at least get something. Middenheim. Apparently, people are expecting you, Kruger, in Middenheim. This is finally is a location where it's confirmed that people of this purple hand are actually waiting for you. So long you've not really been sure where they even are, and if they've even been this purple hand, but finally that has been confirmed, so that is something. You don't know the connection with this Elka Herzen, although she did seem to be up to something, but it does seem more and more likely that she is not even really related to anything, as if she has her own goals. What those goals are, you're not entirely sure. But it does seem logical that she is interested in this weird treasure. This treasure that apparently was found by a man called Dagmar von Wittgenstein decades ago. I'm not sure even what this treasure is, but Dagmar seemed to think it was something that could help him rival the Emperor. Heresy, of course. But that does speak of something quite powerful. Maybe all this is irrelevant. Maybe not. Hard to tell. What are the three of you thinking and doing? So, Kruger, you mentioned about the the Purple Hand potentially awaiting you. Are they awaiting you or your assumed identity? Well, they certainly seem to have interest in Castor Liberung and the money that he's supposed to be bringing to them. Oh, no doubt. But But have they... Well, have they worked out yet that you are not he? That's the thing. It, it doesn't seem as though they really have, does it? 
No, the man in question seemed very disbelieving of you, and you didn't really try and correct him. No, I've sort of been going into the role, or I haven't really directly said that, that I am not he. And in fact, in many occasions during our travels, I have really made it clear that I am Caster Lieberung. So I suppose word has traveled, and I do look exactly like him. Uh, and especially given the whole missing money thing, at this point, even if I said, no, 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 it's not, <laughs> it's not me. Well, it's not something that they would be perhaps so uh, keen on, on buying. So, no, they um, they don't know that I'm not him. They, they still think I am him and they still think that I will be bringing them the, the money because, of course, they want it. And, of course, you also remember that apparently if you don't bring the money, you are going to be declared a traitor and you will regret betraying them, which didn't sound very pleasant. No, it really is not. And I'm unfortunately in a situation where I don't feel like there's all that much that I can do to change all this. I can't necessarily change the way I look, and I don't know if that would even be enough. I mean, they really want what I'm supposed to be bringing them, and they seem to have ways of finding people. They also did mention your companions, so they are also involved, it would seem. Yes. They're trying to find us all. Why do you ask? Well, you know, it's good to establish what we believe the enemy knows, uh, assuming that this group is an enemy, and I think they've given every indication that they are. The thing I'm wondering, we at this point, we can assume not only are the Purple Hand looking for, for you and us as a sort of ancillary detail, uh, there's this Herzen woman... And she has now seen two of us, at least. Uh, but not you. Uh, as we stood in front of her tower during our small reconnaissance expedition. So we are fast losing, if we ever had it, the benefit of, I guess, subterfuge. Uh, I, I feel like the agents of our enemies are going to know... Know us wherever we go. I'm afraid so. Which could make things extremely awkward. At some point we will have to do something about this. We'll have to either stop them or or convince them that we're not who they're looking for. There is one odd thing, though, that does occur to you, Heinrich. It's very odd that if they were all working together, then why did... Lady Herzen, and even that man on the boat seemed very surprised to see you, and according to Kruger, they were watching you and they have your descriptions. That seems like an odd thing for people who are working together to not be sharing information. It's occurred to me there might be some degree of infighting, or at the very least, people aren't keeping up with the notes being passed around at the monthly meetings. But I also don't pretend to understand how any of this works. From the very beginning, if you'll recall, in the carriage, my plan was to let the two people who are either more savvy or more intelligent than I handle those details, and I would just cut the people who got too close meanwhile. I still think that's a pretty good way to go through this. I mean, you do have a very good rapier and a pistol now, so maybe, maybe. I've held up my end of the bargain. One thing that could work to our benefit, if we can somehow pull it off, and I'm still wondering if there is a method of doing so, is to turn our enemies against each other. Right now, I don't think uh, that they are working directly alongside each other, and for all we know, Herzen doesn't see us as an enemy. All we know is she did have something to do with what happened in Bogenhafen, uh, even if it was only from a remove, and that she is searching for this fallen star that von Wittgenstein was so intrigued by all those years ago. I can't imagine she's looking for it for any good or noble reason, especially given just the manner with which she carries herself, if, if I can make such an assessment at face value. At some point, as I say, we our paths are going to cross with one or both parties, if we get into a situation where 
we are in conversation, even being interrogated by one. Not that we should aim to end up in such a position, but if we do, maybe it will be possible to foment a little bit of happy chaos among the people who, well, mean ill uh, either against us or, or the people around us. That does sound like an interesting suggestion, and it would <laughs> it would help us. We are facing quite difficult odds in terms of just the number of people uh, that stand against us. So, yes, yeah, some infighting would be quite beneficial for us. That's for sure. I bring my fist down in a sort of revelation. I've got it. Castel Iberung has died once before as we know. Oh, and it seems only we know. Why not have him die again? And at his death be recorded, we can then smuggle the body away. I'm a trained physician now, so I could declare Castor Liberung dead in the next settlement we arrive at. The word will travel back to the Purple Hand. Uh, we then equip uh, you with, I don't know, a false beard and heavy hood, but something so that people aren't immediately looking at you and saying, oh, it's Castor Liberung. We get word out that Castor was killed, and if we must, pin the blame on this Herzen woman. Maybe it's a little too conspiratorial. I'm, I, I'm, I have to admit, I'm getting a lot more confident in my thinking since uh, receiving my diploma, as it were. I tap the piece of paper that I've not let go of. But I am rather taken with the idea of setting our foes against each other, even if it's only short term, because it means their eyes won't be on us. And they'll be distracting each other while we go on to... Do things like find out the nature of this fallen star and uh, and so forth. But maybe maybe I'm just rambling. Feel free to tell me the idea is nonsense if it, if it sounds such. To be fair, Kruger, the idea does have some merit to it. There's only a small thing you'd think of, and that's that that still wouldn't get Siegfried and Heinrich out of trouble. No, um, I think I think it's a. It's a very interesting idea, and th there's definitely something to it. My my worry would be if I am if Castor is declared dead by you, and then it would be your name on the death certificate. Well, if that's something that they would look at for even a minute, surely they might recognize your name if they know that. But somehow it feels like we have been at least quite open with that thus far haven't we i don't know um it's a risk that we would we would end up taking in that case but the idea itself of pinning them pitting them against e each other uh, through through something like this it could it could work we just need to figure out how to how to best do it and, and make sure that the story sticks and it holds it certainly could and again there's only one little twinge again that you would think of kruger because you know how this works you've been in gangs you really need to know who some of these people really are, don't you? Because it's one thing for a crime boss to be accused of attacking another crime boss. But if it turns out the person you're accusing is a lowly runt, does the crime boss often care that much that one of his boys was killed by another boy? Some would, and some definitely wouldn't. I mean, the one thing we could hope for potentially would be that it would be believed that uh, the money would have been taken by the killer. That could be something that would get their interest and, and would make them pursue the person in question in, in much the same way. Well, especially if it is put down a cause of death, uh, killed in the course of a mugging or banditry or something like that. But, again, I, I accept that I may be overthinking it. Let's, let's cogitate on the idea for a while until it's fully formed. So there's no point rushing into a big fraud like that, seeing as we're already embroiled in one. And all three of you would definitely, 
definitely think that you are onto something here. Because it does seem as if that maybe these all-knowing villains maybe don't know everything after all. And that could be useful. It really could. Oh, but I think it's it's good that you're thinking ahead. I think I think it's going to be something that we can make use of in the future. And it's good that you have that license now. I'm really looking forward to see what how that can help us going forward. I say with a smile. Well, I hope to use it for more legitimate reasons than this, but uh, in the end, Castle Ebron really is dead. It wouldn't technically be a lie to declare it as such. Totally true. It would be a very legitimate thing to do. Uh, fully legal, I say. <laughs> and what's more, he did die in a bandit attack. Indeed. You're just telling the truth. That's all. A few months late. Better than never. As the other two are talking, you notice, Heinrich, that Walder has come up and seems to be gesturing for you to come over. Oh, I will politely excuse myself from the conversation, likely easy to do that as the conspiratorial thinking goes by, Heinrich's own brain cells begin to, to smoke a little bit, so any excuse to step away. I will join her, I presume, on, on the edge of the boat or near one of the railings. Indeed. Hey, how you holding up? You, you doing alright, Heinrich? I give her a small shrug. Yeah. The burden's been lighter these days. Of course, always worries on the horizon, but at least the immediate future seems all right. Well, I hope so. Going and doing this little detour for your, for your friend's friend. I can't say I'm that happy about it, but but I respect the captain's wishes, and I agree. It, it'll be good just to check check where your, your, your mar and dad's boat was. That makes sense. I was sincerely hoping that she wasn't going to bring it up, but here we are, and uh, my face visibly deflates a bit at the mention. Yeah, I know that Yosef is, is wound pretty hard around the rudder over it. I'm trying to keep my hopes up, I suppose. Well, keep them up you should. We're going to be fine. We're going to find out what happened. And we'll sort this. And she attempts to give you a pat on the shoulder. I'll accept that. If for no other reason, then I assume that let's just break eye contact and she won't be able to see the... the lack of belief. These rivers have taken lives for less. And under far less... not glorious, but uh, intense circumstances. It's a world where you can hit one shoal on the river, fall off, hit your head on something, and it's over, and that's enough to take a family away. And here's mine, sailing their vessel into the, the hearts of plague, and... Look, if I were the kind of person who, who believed in fate's ability to take care of the river folk or, or the common person, I wouldn't have escaped the town to go seek better fortunes and glory, right? Speaking of which, what you be doing after this, then? We do this little errand thing, and then, well, we're probably thinking of heading back round Outdorf, and then maybe on to Marenburg, but, uh, well, uh, what, what you thinking of doing? All this stuff of hunting down <laughs> miscreants, are you going to become a bounty hunter now, or something? <laughs> I think by now I've demonstrated that my ability to think more than a few days in the future isn't exactly my strong suit, but... <sighs> the things that we've been running into the the people it's all uh, i went and and sought dueling instruction because i imagined that the greatest conflicts amongst men happened in in courts of law and courts of honor the stories of, of emperors on crusade and, and counts putting down the ignoble among them and it turns out that yeah that happens but God is, and the news as often as not, it ends in, in fratricide as opposed to something else. There is, I have come to see, uh, a certain banal, diffuse evil in the world. And that sometimes the greatness that keeps this, this whole clockwork machine of ours running aren't grand armies or flashy duelists, but 
just one man or woman in the right place at the right time with the right pistol. Hmm. Well, I can't say that sounds like a very safe way of living your life, but I suppose the river's not exactly always that much safer. I understand. So I guess you'll be leaving us then. Which port would you like us to drop you off at? I could not say on my own. It relies so much, of course, on my companions. We are, at this point, nothing without one another. Aye, I get it. Well, I'm glad at least you've started being honest with us. Makes this all much easier. (laughs) As honest as I can be, given the fluid nature of the situation. I've heard rumor of Wickendorf. I've heard rumor of Middenheim. I suppose one of those things will come to be true. Hmm. It gives you another pat on the shoulder and just walks off saying, Remember the river will provide. The river will provide. Also remember that. But don't worry. We'll look out for you as long as we can. Hmm. And for that you will have my eternal gratitude. Meanwhile, Captain Joseph has ambled over towards you, Siegfrieda. He's carrying with him a bottle of something. Oh, hello, Captain. Hey, Siegfrieda, lass, how are you doing? Or I should be saying, Dr. Siegfrieda, right? <laughs> oh, well, I'm not... Uh, if you like. <laughs> I, 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 I realised, lass, we, we, we headed off a little quick from Kemperbad. We didn't really have a moment to celebrate it. Congratulating. I heard from the others that you got your, your, your fancy, <laughs> fancy guild membership. And I... Well deserve it, well deserve it. So I thought, I thought, if, if you'd have a moment, I brought out some of the brandy. <laughs> you drink brandy, right? Yes, uh, and it's a... Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I was talking about uh, putting some coin down to, to get some fine alcohol with which to celebrate, but unfortunately we had to leave at some speed due to events uh, that don't bear going into right now. Um... So yes, I'll I'll have a brandy. That'll be delightful. Thank you. And he will produce a little shot glass, one for himself and one for you, and give you some brandy. I will sip at it. I'm not a shot downer. Aye, aye, that's it, lass. That's it. You, you enjoy it. Again, I just wanted to congratulate you. In the time you've been on the boat, all I've seen is, well, well a, a good... Hard-working person, doing her best, and I'm glad that, by the sounds of it, you're finally going to get what you deserve. Well, I really do appreciate you saying so, you know. I I don't think any of us intended to be taking this voyage together, not nearly as for as long as we have, especially. And I I found this place the best home I've ever lived in. Uh, you, You never fail to make us feel secure, in not only our transit, but also in that we will reach our destination. So, uh, I, I, it probably doesn't need to be said, but if you were to ever injure yourself, Captain, or any of your crew, you would never have to uh, hand over a coin for, for medical treatment. It would be, um, wh- whatever the ailment, I would treat it, well, willingly and gratis. Uh, no doubt about that. Ah, that makes this captain very happy. No, lass, no, you're always welcome on the berry bell. Always, always. I was wondering then, after we, we do this little detour, which I'm really hoping will be very, very, very short, um, where we're going to be heading back round, probably Altdorf, and then maybe onto Marenburg, uh, where, where do you think you'll be wanting to go? You, you think you'll be wanting to find a town somewhere, or or even go to the city and and set yourself up or something? I'm not I'm not really sure how it works. I know in villages, you know, there's always a local doctor, sometimes. Yes, but usually it's an apothecary, and uh, my my calling is more towards surgery, which admittedly is a little practice as a sole medical field. I, you know, I do deal with medicine as well as as the cutting, but it is the it is the, the the field of anatomy, uh, knowing how to, I guess, pull it apart and put it back together again that truly holds my interest. And to set up a permanent surgery uh, would require a city, I imagine. It's not it's even something I've given much thought to, Captain. Uh, quite honestly, I've uh, barely been able to look ahead of achieving my full physician's license 
or, and guild membership and, and so on. And now that I have it, I guess I'm just feeling like, well, at least I can treat people legally now. I imagine that's a helpful thing. <laughs> Well, hey, 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 no need to be thinking about things like that if they're going to cause you stress. I, I just was curious. Whatever happens, we'll be taking you back to wherever you need to go. Well, I know I know that uh, Wittgendorf and Middenheim are both... Uh, they are, it's a destination that we would very much like to visit. <laughs> well, Middenheim, we'd have to part ways at Altdorf. There's no, you can't be sailing a boat to Middenheim. <laughs> Well, that that saddens me that we will have to part ways at that point, but um, rest assured that uh, we will remember this stage of our journey with incredible fondness. He extends his arms out, and if you allow him, you think he'd like a hug. I'll give him a sort of stiff embrace <laughs> in response. Uh, you know, it's it's not something I'm terribly used to, but I'm... I'm more than familiar with uh, human displays of affection. He hugs you back firmly and then gives you a good slap on the back. Ha ha! Aye, aye, no lass, don't you worry. Wherever you need to be going, we'll be taking you. And it's been a pleasure having you. To be frank, I, I might even be missing the three of you when you have to go. <laughs> well, we've certainly caused you no end of unscheduled stops, so maybe your income will increase with us, not present. He gives you a friendly laugh as you continue to finish your drink with him. Meanwhile, Kruger, you feel a tugging on your shoulder, and there, of course, is Rena. She tends to keep to herself lately, but she does, of course, come to talk to you. Having a nice chat with your uh, friends? Yeah. Yeah. Nice to have a little bit of, well, quiet and kind of calm <laughs> times. Um had some excitement back there in Camperbad, so yeah. Oh, I noticed you can't really seem to keep yourself out of it, can you? <laughs> <laughs> it's just too much fun, you know, but I must confess that I do enjoy the quieter times as well. What about yourself? Oh, I'm bored, she says as she sort of plays around with her daggers. Don't really like being on a boat. It's a bit boring. What do you do? There's nothing to do on a boat. Not really. I suppose that's true. Fancy myself wanting to go somewhere, play some cards. I don't know, maybe, you know, do a bit of gambling or something. I don't know. She seems quite anxious as she's speaking to you, her eyes constantly trailing on to where you're going. Something on your mind? Aside from the boredom, I mean. I'm just worried is all. We're nearly there. We're nearly there, and all you've got to do is drop me off, and, uh, well, I'd appreciate a little bit of help, but I understand uh, you're not going to want to stay long you got stuff to do. We do have things to do, but... I mean, I I owe it to you to help you find your sister and make sure that she's okay. And I'm, I'm curious, to be honest. I want to... I want to see what's happened. Huh. I wonder if it's nothing good. I wonder if it's something bad. And dangerous, even, maybe. I don't know. All this talk of plague. That's true. That would be bad if it was something like that. But I'm, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's just, you know, other things have gotten in between and that's why you haven't heard from her. We'll, we'll find her and she'll be all right. And if nothing else, if if it is something bad, well, I don't know. At least it, it's going to get you out of this boredom. And and I'm, I'm sure she'll be fine. So don't, don't worry about that part. All right. Well, I am grateful to you helping and I am grateful you got this lot to help. Yeah, the crew aren't so bad. Your handsome friend, he's, he's alright. Head in the clouds it seems a lot of the time. Still don't like your doctor friend. What's he looking at me? Reminds me of people in Null. Bet she thinks she's better than me just because she knows things. I think you got her wrong there. She's she's really not like that. You, you'd, you'd know that if you were able to get to know her better but it's... Um... Well, She's hardly come over and said hello, that's all I'm saying. Oh, she's a little bit of an acquired taste, but once you get to know her, she's really, really nice. Well, you say that about everyone. I suppose I do. You're nice too, I say in a smile. She gives you a bit of a scoff, but does look at you and sort of softens a little. Uh, Alright, well, 
thank you again. I, I, I do appreciate you actually helping out. I'm sorry I was a bit, a week or so ago, a bit rude. I just, I just don't understand why. Why what? Why'd you have to go? Yeah, I, I, I do look back at it sometimes and, and ask myself the same thing. But I just had to, you know? I just couldn't continue living like like that. There, there had to be more. Well, there was more. There was... He used to say we weren't a family, but I thought we were a family. Sigrid thought we were family. Some of the others thought we were family. You know, a lot of them started going off when you left. They thought, oh yeah, Kruger's probably got it right. Maybe we do need to go and find better stuff. And so off they left. I'll spare you the details, but it didn't go very well for some of them. Oh, sad to hear that. And it's just weird. It just it just gets me... I'm sorry. I just don't get now, now suddenly with these people. Suddenly now you're all... It's a happy family. What, we weren't good enough? Oh, you were great. <laughs> you were great. I just... I just had to find something else. And... I don't know. It's just... It's just the way I am. It's just the way I'm built. I, I don't think I can stay in one place for very long. I, I sometimes worry that I'm going to end up doing the same to my new friends as I did to you and I worry about that but hey we'll see maybe maybe things are going to be different this time and you're here now as well and who knows what the future holds right I don't know maybe you're right sorry there's nothing to be sorry about I'm legitimately sad about Anyone ended up in, you know, a tough situation or ended up doing something they shouldn't have done because of me. That's, you know, I just had to chase my own future, you know. I just had to walk my own path. Didn't mean for anyone to get hurt. She looks down on the ground, chews her lip, starts playing with the daggers again. She just gives you a bit of a nod and kind of awkwardly walks off. You don't think she's angry, though. Maybe just a bit sad. As am I. As am I. I mean, she's right that we were a, a family, in a way. Not a particularly functional one, but still a family, and we tried to look after each other. I mean, we only had each other on the streets, so what else could we do? But I couldn't stay. I can't see any way that I could have remained there. I don't think I did the wrong thing, but sometimes, even when you do what's right for you, people do get hurt. I just kind of sit down and exhale and feel depressed all of a sudden. And you'll sit and feel a little sad. After all, she's not entirely wrong. But at the same time, those guys you were with, it, it just seemed that that was going to make everything better, didn't it? And maybe you'd have gone back. Maybe if everything had gone really well in Middenheim, eventually you'd have just gone back to Nulled. But this time, you'd have had money and friends, and maybe you could have helped out your old colleagues. Although by the sounds of it, a lot of them have gone. I would have. I would have helped them out. I would have. Perhaps I still can Perhaps there's still someone I can't help. I can't help Rena. That's something I can do. I can't help her find her sister. That will... That will do a little to help ease my guilt. Not much, but a little. It'll have to be enough. At this point, Grimm comes over. And of course, he doesn't give you many words at all, other than to simply say, Change of force soon. Grab that rope. There's a good boy. I nod. And I do as he says. And you'll grab that rope and begin helping the boat begin to change its course. As it starts drifting slowly closer to the western bank. And the day will come to an end and eventually you will get some rest. You wake Kruger. You find yourself in a cramped, stony place. It takes you a moment to remember where you are. You're back in Middenheim. 
back in that little room you were renting out. It's dark. You can hear the sound of dripping. What do you do? I look around, get my bearings. Yeah, I'm here. All right, I, I get up. What am I supposed to be doing? You stand up and try looking around. It's completely dark. Just the sound of that dripping. The blood. You can smell the blood in the air. This is a bad place. I'll follow the dripping sound. I'm drawn there. The room begins to light slightly. Someone's holding a torch. You turn and you see your old friend. The one who was running the gang, of course. Carter Schilf was his full name. At least you think it was. He often went by a lot of nicknames. He's smiling at you. His face covered in blood. His missing face, that is. That's right, it was cut off, you remember now. You've really been trying not to remember that detail, but all their faces you think had been removed. And there he is, but you know it's him. He's smiling, with what remains of his mouth, at least, and holding the torch. He speaks, but his voice sounds very odd. Doesn't sound like he used to sound. Well, my dear little... <laughs> well, what is your name, really, you tell me? You're not Castelliberum. I know that. What do you like to be called? Well, why don't we go with Castor? We both know that name. But I don't think I know yours. You're not Carter Shelf. Am I not? Don't I look like him? The figure gestures at the face dripping in blood. You look exactly like him. And that's impossible. Yes. But dreams are funny things, aren't they? Lots of things can happen in them that seem impossible in the light of day. It's rather amusing, isn't it? But this is no dream. At least no ordinary dream. Is it not? I wouldn't know. I don't dream. That sounds like a lonely existence to not have dreams. I don't need to dream, Castor. I can see wonders beyond your understanding all the time. Beautiful wonders. I could show them if you liked. You might not like them, though. A lot of people don't. Humans, at least. I think I'm <laughs> all right without those wonders. But you're here for a reason, I'm sure. Not just to talk about the things you can show me, right? I'm curious. Where are you going? What are you doing? What do you think you want to do? What do you think is going to happen? These things are all very exciting, aren't they? They are. I suppose eventually, the people who are looking for us are going to catch up with us. And then we're going to put up a brave fight and then we're going to die. It's just about trying to extend that period as long as possible before that happens. Try to find some kind of life before it all catches up with us. That's rather fatalistic, don't you think? You remind me of someone I knew. What was his name again? I think he lived in a town called Bogenhof and <laughs> I've forgotten already. No, that's awfully fatalistic. Maybe you'll catch up with them. Maybe you'll kill them. Maybe you'll save the day. You don't think you can? It's disappointing. I would like to. And perhaps I will. Perhaps I will. Are you going to help me in that? Is that why you're here? Are you going to help me find happiness and survive all this and become a big hero? Oh, I don't really care. I just want... Well, to put on a show, you understand. It's very important. A show for who? The only person who truly matters, of course. You? Oh, no. No. Oh, I am but a humble servant. 
Didn't you notice that in Brokenhafen? I am just a servant. That is true. So it is for your master, then? You could say that, yes. Well, I suppose we'll have to put on a good show, then. You'd better. I'll be very disappointed if you don't. Still, I like you, Castor Liberon. I think I might even like you more than the real Castor Liberon. Maybe. We shall have to see. I'm glad to hear that. Let's see what's ahead of us, then. Let's see what awaits us in the big show. The figure does a little bow. Blood spilling to the ground. And you awaken, sweating in your bed. What do you do? That was impossible. It was a dream, but it wasn't a dream. It could, couldn't have been a dream. It was communicating with me. I, <laughs> I tried to just fake my way through it. Tried to hold down the fear. It kind of worked, I guess. But if it's invading my dreams like this... This is going to end badly, isn't it? I think to myself. Well, what does it all mean? Put on a show? For their master? What's our role in all this? I just... I sit up and I try to just think through everything that I... Remember everything that's happened and I just try to make sense of it. But I'm not sure how successful I am with that. Very difficult. Very difficult. Was that the thing you met in Bogenhafen? Could have been. But what was that thing? That you do not know. Still, it's morning now and you can hear the others calling for you to join them on deck. It is the second day of your travels. And you notice the time has come to actually change direction. The great expanse of the river right continues for some way quite on a wide stretch of river for some time. But you now notice there is a, a secondary branch. This seems smaller. From your direction, it seems to be heading to the east. Although, of course, by a map, it's actually in the west. It seems this is where you're going. Your boat turns and begins to head down this smaller part of the river, separated by a large land mass, although it seems to be mainly just trees and shrubs that separates this part of the river. Another day passes. It's a lot chillier here, colder. The woods draw close to the boat. There's very little life. Occasionally you hear some noises from the woods, birds, beasts. There's very little around here as you progress down this stretch of the river. Around the third day, you begin to see something in the distance. Captain Joseph's at the front of the boat, making sure that the course is clear. You see a castle. Again, it's just to the east of you. Most of the castle seems to be up on land, and at this point, the land to the east has risen up dramatically forming a great cliff. It seems as you look up that most of this structure must be on that side of the river, on that cliff very high up. But it does extend outwards to the water. In the water there is another cropping of land that goes straight up. It's not very big, not very wide, but it is big and wide enough it seems to contain more of this castle. And you can see there looks like a stone bridge connecting this bit of the castle to the mainland and the rest of the castle. The sky is dark and gloomy. And you see a great deal of blackish birds suddenly flying from the direction of this castle. Josef comes up to you, Heinrich, and frowns. We're nearly there, lad. I reckon that must be the uh, castle uh, Wittgendorf. I think that's its name. Just another 10-20 minutes, we should reach the village. Ominous and ill-omened. Has it always felt this way? You've been here before. I ain't been down this way, lad, for... Well, even before the plague. I maybe came this way ten years ago. Once. Feels worse. 
How was this place before the plague hit it? Uh, was it ever a thriving village, or has it always been under this sort of pall of grey? I heard that many, many, many years ago, maybe a hundred years ago, it wasn't so bad. When I last came here, it was awful at best. People had been avoiding it for years. The plague was the last straw, but even before that, not many people came down this way. Why would you? It's a slower route to Nuln, and they ain't got much to... Well, they didn't have much worth selling back then. Sigmar knows how bad it is now. Like I said, we, we drop off your friend, we, we make our inquiries, and then we, we, we should be getting off as soon as we can. Of course, that is the ideal. Sigmar knows if our curiosity and penchant for falling into things will allow it to be true. At that point, I'm looking between Siegfrieda and Kruger. I don't know if it just feels more ominous or if i've just talked myself into believing that oh no no your i think your feelings are valid uh, <laughs> uh, i look over at the castle the crumbling ruins the bridge and and the crows above our heads there's definitely a a taste of death that has hung here for longer than the plague. Uh, I don't think these Wittgensteins did well by their people. Well, it's not always the case, but for now, I believe Yosef and I agree. The less time we spend ashore here, the better. You find yourself looking at the castle intently, Siegfrieda. Is it inhabited? Is it desolate? And yet, no. You do see evidence of torches in at least some of the windows mainly around the, that tower in the middle that connects the two parts of castle, but also in the castle itself. There does seem to be someone home. Maybe. Well, if we don't find anyone in the village proper, at least we, we can introduce ourselves to the inhabitants of that castle, I'm sure. They will give us a very warm welcome. Yeah, they seem very welcoming in terms of how they've built that place. It, uh... It's not exactly inviting, is it? No. It occurs to you that you're definitely not getting anywhere near those parts out on the water. If you were to attack such a place, it would have to be from the land. We have to keep in mind the reason we're stopping here, or at least one of the reasons. The stumbling upon Wittgenstein's tower on the... or tower ruins on the riverbank was coincidence. And us finding out that he was chasing down a falling star, likewise coincidence. Although we could certainly tell from the inhabitants of the tower that he was into some dark and sticky stuff, to put it mildly. What makes us come here from my perspective, why this is relevant to us, is because... We have reason to believe Herzen is seeking the same thing. And Herzen was connected again, even if only tangentially, to what happened in Bogenhafen. So this isn't... This is probably not a cause that's going to earn us a great deal of coin, but I remember us saying that we need to perform righteous and valorous deeds. If we can find out anything about this fallen star what it's for what danger it poses and if it's a weapon how to stop it from here then I think it's worth paying a visit to the inhabitants of that castle it's at that point that you hear a slight bump against the side of the boat I look at whatever caused that bump you go over to the side of the boat and look down to see a corpse floating in the water. Worth saying, I would not allow Kruger to go investigate this alone, even if it weren't for the general motif that we're experiencing now. The last thing something bumped into this boat, it was vile, dead, and meant us harm. So I'll be right behind him, hand on my pistol. Indeed, and both of you will observe this rotting corpse moving up and down in the river before you.
You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the legendary campaign The Enemy Within for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition, published by Cubicle 7. In the second part of the series, we are tackling Book 2, Death on the Reich. Joining us as players in this series are none other than Aaron Hammonds from Queen's Court Games and our dear friend Matthew Dawkins. The music was made by Flowers for Body Snatchers, Word Clock, Metatron Omega, Agersonus, Apocryphus, Halgrath, and Northumbria, featuring a number of collaborations with other artists, and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody dark ambient for your gaming table. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Horschelbear, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Bob Lange, Julian, Cameron, Anchon, and Graham Barry for their generous support. We would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Indie Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name right on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember, Skaven are definitely not real. <laughs>